Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, appreciate you all coming out. Uh, I'm a recluse by nature. Um, I think I'm modest, so it grieves me to share a little bit of my background with you because without it, it the, there will be no context to my remarks. Um, I'm glad to see a lot of corporations in the room. I started by running a global travel management company of which many were clients, and after selling that to American Express, uh, got in to creating the uh, in-store clinic business uh, through Take Care Health Systems, where we had in-store clinics and pharmacies nationwide with three national chains until being acquired by White Walgreens, where we then grew that and I became president of Walgreens Health and Wellness and had about 350 uh, on-campus health centers and the same number of health clinics, all to provide affordable, accessible, high-quality care. Well, after about four years at, at Walgreens, I decided to leave and do something else and begin to digitize uh, healthcare and make it affordable, accessible, and of high quality. And we started uh, uh, New Ocean Health Systems, you know, solutions actually, that um, uh, is now, I guess, in our fourth, third or fourth year, and we want to uh, revolutionize that whole space of of health and, and well-being, because I, I believe that um, the video I'm about to show you um, will, will portrays the noise um, in an overhyped and overpriced uh, part of the business. <laughs> Well, the other thing I do is I've been ranching cattle for 30 years. And in, I took this video um, a couple of weeks ago. I had to separate the mom cows from their calves to inoculate the calves uh, against the number of diseases. And you could hear them you know, calling for their calves. And you know, in their world, health and well-being of their calves are the most important things uh, going. And just as a mother calf um, has feels a responsibility to um, look after um, her calves. We as companies and corporations, we have that, that same responsibility, but we have it um, in a world with such uncertainty. I mean, we're, you know, you, you look at the news, there's possibilities of war. You know, we have robots, we just heard something about that. You have people wondering if they're ever gonna get a raise. What's the cost of living? Things just are very, very um, upsetting at times, and they're upsetting to the people that, that we all employ, and we have a great responsibility to, you know, to, to focus uh, on, on them because this world that we live in, and quite frankly, is depressing. And if we aren't all depressed half the time when we're finished watching the news, well, there's probably something, something wrong with us. Um, <laughs> So what does this slide show here? Um, well, basically that you can't afford to be sick, but you also can't afford not to know that you're sick. And a lot of people don't know that they're, that they're sick. So where does that leave employers? Well, um, yeah, there is no one size fits all, and yet everybody's looking for health and well-being solutions that do. I think we're getting there. I think we have to get to a place where you know, everything is, is customized um, for companies and for what their needs are and for what their people are looking for. Um, there is no perfect program out there. And um, so um, the whole process um, is becoming draining to a great degree and the value of, of health and wellness programs are being questioned by CFOs. They're not really understanding the amount of money that's being put into them. And as I said, I think they're frankly overpriced. Um, you know, we, um, we talk about um, you know, risks in, uh, in health risk assessments. Well, you know, I don't like the word risk 
Um, it's a, uh, not, not a great word, and people don't like taking health risk assessments. They're long, and they're tedious, and frankly, I think they uh, tend to make people lie about things. Um, I know when I go in to get a massage or something every once in a blue moon, they ask me what, what meds I'm on, and I leave about three of them out. Um, they're embarrassing. And so I think, um, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's problematic. Um, I don't know where I am on a clicker here, but we'll see what the next one is. Traditional health risk assessments can leave you, your employees, and the entire office feeling a little exposed. Very exposed. Can you look at this for me? Looks good. Really? With their long and invasive list of questions, these assessments leave your employees feeling vulnerable. Violated. And on display. Yep. Sounds good. Sounds good. But what if there were health assessments that were simple, friendly, and private? Hey, uh, you need me to sign for this? No. Well, that's exactly what New Ocean has designed. Our health assessments don't feel like creepy interrogations. And they're as easy as putting your pants on in the morning, which maybe you should do now. So what we ended up designing, um, in addition to reimagining the, you know, the long health you know, assessments, which we call private health assessments, um, is the minute health assessment. And using different types of behavioral economics and science, and um, we've been able to bring it down to like 14 questions and figure out the archetypes of individuals to know who actually is going to want to get involved you know, in, in, in changing their health and getting involved in challenges and rewards and things like that, and who's not, who needs to be nudged, et cetera, because um, otherwise we're, you know, we're wasting a lot of time. Um, you know, one of the things that we tend to be giving out these days are Fitbits and wearables, but you know, for some people, um, they feel like ankle bracelets for being on a home arrest. Um, for others, it's, it's great, but I think we, you know, we spend an awful lot of money on, on these things and uh, not necessarily sure what the, what the return is. Um, so, you know, one of the things that uh, I guess I wrote about before was you know, treating your people like cattle. Um, you know, most of the things I've written or books are sacrilegious by, by title, I wrote a book called The Customer Comes Second 20 years ago. Um, it ended up being a New York Times bestseller, but everybody thought I was absolutely nuts in, in, in naming it at that. Now it's, you know, it sells all, all over the world and a lot of universities. But um, after being selected one of the 10 best companies to work for, you know, I felt it's important to really you know, share um, why companies have this great responsibility to focus first on the eyes of, theirs, of, of their people. Because unless someone knows what it feels to be first in the eyes of their employer, and the employer removes fear, frustration, and everything else, then in fact they're never going to be able to focus on, on, on their clientele. Um, they just won't. So, um. so Another thing I said is ROI obtainable. I'm not so sure about, about that either. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's too many definitions on, on ROI, and there, I've yet to see a couple that are really you know, all that provable. You can see here that in this study, 60% of the employees with access to these programs even knew about them and only 40% participate. Well, you know, let's, let's, um, let's think about, about that and, and you know, why we should throw out our, our calculators because it all comes down to engagement. And when I think of engagement, I start thinking about, uh, well, that's usually before marriage. And then I think that 60% of all marriages fail. Probably another 20% want to, but 
can't. And their statistics are probably better than the engagement when it comes to health and well-being programs. Um, so you really have to define engagement. It's a lot of people scares you the hell off, and other people, you know, really want to get engaged. But you know, that's where it comes down to, you know, understanding what what a company wants to have their folks engaged in, what people want to be engaged in. So these are four things that you know. Frankly, I, I think you've got to just look at for you know, considering what your ROI is, because it's different. Every company is different. You know, two companies are the same. Um, they, the companies have goals. People have goals. Don't ask people to do too much uh, at any one given time. Just take those little steps and begin to, to do what you need to do to have a successful marriage. Behavior modification. I mean, it's the same thing is true when it comes to health and wellness, health and well-being. It's behavior modification. And frankly, neither of them are easy, which is um, why a lot of them don't work. Being a, being a rancher for 30 years, um, we have a saying, which is one of my favorite, um, you can't fake farming. You can't say to folks, hey, come over and look at my corn. It's knee high by the 4th of July, or it's like 10 feet tall. Or when you look at, you see this here, it's browned out. We had a really bad drought in North Dakota where I ranch. And uh, um, you know, we really had to take care of the health and well-being of our cattle. I had to drive 220 miles for two weeks to go cut hay where, where it had rained. But had I not... You know, the calves and the cattle, you know, would, would not have been able to, to survive. But the key to farming, and it's most important in business, is um, simply to, you know, to not fake it. And that's where culture comes in. Um, corporate culture is absolutely key to a health and well-being. If people don't feel like their company really cares about them, truly cares about them, and not faking it by creating a false image and you know, to be able to recruit people saying we're a great, great place to work. Um, you know, the programs won't work. The engagement, the participation won't be there. It won't last. And people will become very, very cynical. And we as companies, we, we don't want our, you know, our folks to become cynical. So, you know... Corporate surveys, um, you can get to that in a second, because they don't really find out to a great degree how people feel about their company. But I wanted to just try something for, for a second here. I'd like everybody to just close their eyes and think about what you typically pray for. Just close your eyes and just say to yourself, when I pray or when I think about you know, what, what, am I, what am I praying for? How many, how many people pray or care or think about the health and well-being of their family and loved ones? Yeah. So this is important stuff, right? I mean, think about it. That's what we pray for. And they, but what do we do about it? You know, try lots of different things. Um, but we've really got to take this, take this stuff seriously. Because I really didn't like surveys, years ago I started to do something. I, I, we had a corporate client called Benny and Smith. They made crayons. And so we sent out from Human Resources randomly... Um, 100, 200 pieces of white paper in a box of crayons. And I'd ask people to just draw a picture of what the company you know, means to them. What's, what's it about? And this slide I should have talked about earlier because it has so much to do with, with corporate culture again. At the top, you, know, you see what... Um, we all talk about, but underneath the surface is what, what really counts. And, and we typically talk about bringing work home. But how many of us 
in companies or in any, anything that we do. Think about our folks that we work with that bring home to work. It happens every day. The stresses are unbelievable. They're all over the place. We talked about it earlier, the challenges of living in today's world. It's not easy. And you add to that all the things that could happen at home, and they come, they come to work. And we as leaders of companies, those of us in human resources, you know, we need to make sure that our leaders are instinctful enough to know when somebody's hurting, when somebody needs something, and for the company to get involved and do something about it. And I'm going to go back a bunch of slides here to see where I want it to be, where they're missing. I think they're, they're not missing, they're coming up. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> really would be good in order if I could hold the clicker and read the cards at the same time, but I can't even see them at this point. Um, so here's, here's one of those that I sent out um, and I, to a, somebody working in one of our Atlanta offices. And this is a picture that they sent. It was Christmas time. You could see that the, that the a tree was all adorned. The kids were playing jacks. And it was warm. The dog was sleeping. The fire was going. But it, it said before. And I flipped it over. And it said after. Well, the tree's not in very good shape. And then fire's out. God knows what happened to the dog. Um, and the kids aren't even talking to each other, and the parents are like, well, what had happened was this person thought they were losing their job. And I called them on the phone. I said, what's going on? They said, well, I'm losing my job. I said, no, you're not. She said, oh, I heard finances being moved to Philadelphia. I go, well, that's true, but you're all being retrained. What I found out was that we had a big communications problem in finance. Now, how many times does the survey ask you, like, what's going on in finance when it comes to communications? It doesn't. Here's one from out here. I think this was in our Sunnyvale office. And um, this, was, this was somebody who, um, when I called, and I said, uh, okay, wh what's this all about? Well, my computer's so slow, I can't be productive, and I'm never going to get up the corporate ladder to the you know, pot of gold. Well, what survey asks what the baud rate or the speed rate of your computer is. It doesn't. But look what, what this first want to do. They wanted to simply do the best they possibly could. And this is, you know, we're companies. We have to get creative in finding out what's really going on with our folks so that we can create the right kinds of environments and the right kind of culture that's real and that you, you know, that you can't fake because we're all born with these innate, sniffers, our ability to know when we're being Zoomed. And Aretha Franklin, I think, you know, she sang it best in her song, Who's Zooming Who? And we all know when we're getting Zoomed. So when I see companies or leaders, when we try and navigate somebody's mind or whatever, forget it, doesn't work, waste of time, don't do it. What we need to be is, is real. Because, um, you know, in... In art, there's a term called pentimento. And pentimento means to repent in Latin, but it also means that when you start out with a canvas, and say you do a bowl of fruit, a still life, and after you know, a couple years, you know, you're out of canvases and you, you, know, you decide, well, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the Mona Lisa over it. And um, that's great. But then all of a sudden, you get Carmen Miranda. The bowl of fruit has come through, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's what pentimento is. So once again, don't try and fool people. You know, you know, my, two of my favorite words are, um, are sincere and, and authentic. So... What, what is sincere? Sincere has its roots in Latin, too. And sin means without, and seer is, is wax. And in the old 
you know, days of the Roman Empire when there was marble all over the place, if the marble cracked, you would um, take wax and you would you know, put it between the cracks and it would look like a perfectly great piece of marble again until the sun started to beat down. And then all of a sudden, the cracks would appear and it wouldn't be authentic. Um, it would be, well, it would, in fact, in that case, be authentic, but they would be trying to hide something. We can't hide things. We can't hide things from the people we employ. We can't hide things from each other. We need to be open. We need to be honest. We need to be trustworthy. We, we need to care. You know, it's the putting the care back in the health care. You know, it's, it becomes oxymoronic at times. And, you know, that's just not right. We're, we're on earth for, you know, a, a limited amount of time. And all those people that we interact with, that we lead, we're all interdependent. None of us can do anything alone. And going back to what we all prayed for, the health and well-being of those that we loved, we, we as, as companies and others in the audience that do other great things in healthcare, we can do something about it. We can make life better for people. We can take that stress out. You know, if I were a physician, I probably would think, well, I'm a hypochondriac, so I could think of about anything, but if I would think that you know, stress causes you know, a lot of other side effects. I mean, I watch TV, and I see a new pharma product out, and by the time they're finished with all the side effects, I've got like 11 of them. And then comes another one, I got another 11, and all of a sudden I feel like I should be running into the doctor. Happened to me a couple of weeks ago when I came back from North Dakota, and I was having chest pains and pains running up and down my arm and all this other stuff, and you know, my wife said, you gotta go see the doctor. I said, no, I'll be fine. She said, no, 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 look, you know, you know how's your chest feel? Well, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's a little heavy. So I go into the doctor and uh, get an EKG and everything. And he says, so tell me, what have you been doing lately? And I said, well, I've been on a tractor for a couple of weeks, you know, cutting hay and bumping around all over the place. And I had to get on my horse and move cattle and so on and so forth. He goes, um, I think you need a massage. <laughs> so I went and got a massage. I felt great. I mean, really, all of my effects went away. It was, it was wonderful. <laughs> the masseuse, though, in talking to me, she now is a hypochondriac, so she's, you know, she's seeing a psychologist, so the healthcare costs are going way up. They went down, and then they went up again. So anyway, I want to, you know, Thank you all for putting up and listening to me for uh, this, this period of time. I really appreciate what you're all doing, and um, it's, it's great. It's, it's wonderful, and it's, it makes life really worth, worth living for people. So thank you very much. Keep it up.